In this video, we're going to talk about the cash debt coverage ratio, which is another measure of liquidity. Now, when we've talked about liquidity in the past, we've talked about things like the, the current ratio, and then we've talked about the quick ratio, and these, these basically were taking current assets and dividing them by current liabilities to see if the firm could satisfy its, its obligations in the next year uh, with, it, with its most liquid assets. And then we also looked at the current cash debt coverage ratio. So basically the same word up here only had current. But now that is basically looking at, we were looking at the operations from the firm, the cash flow from operations from the statement of cash flows, and say could that satisfy the firm's obligations in the next year. But again, now we're kind of looking at short term with all those measures of liquidity, but what about a firm's long-term obligations? What about things like long-term debt? So all these ratios that we've looked at before, they didn't, they didn't really get into the idea of long-term debt or how a firm would be able to service its debt. But with the cash debt coverage ratio, and again, this is not the current cash debt coverage ratio, but the cash debt coverage ratio is going to take a longer term focus and it's going to take a look at all the firm's obligations, short term and long term, and then look at the cash flow from the firm's operations and measure how liquid the firm is in terms of meeting those obligations. Accordingly, when we look at the formula to compute the cash debt coverage ratio, we're going to be having not average current liabilities as we did with the current cash coverage ratio in our last video, but we're going to have average total liabilities. Okay, so and now that difference is going to be that we've basically added in long-term debt. Because total liabilities is just long-term debt plus current liabilities. Okay? So we're again, we're looking at the cash flow from the firm's operations, which, which this number is going to come from the statement of cash flows. It's going to be the net cash provided by the firm's core operations. And then we're going to divide that by the average total liabilities of the firm. So like the, the total liabilities as of January 1 plus the total liabilities as of December 31 divided by 2. Just take the average or you could just use uh, total liabilities. So if we look at the current or the cash debt coverage ratio in, in practice and, and take a look at some numbers for some actual firms, uh, we'll start with the cash flow from operations and again this comes from the statement of cash flows and let's say that for firm one that's twenty five hundred dollars and for firm two that's twelve hundred dollars and then the average and now we're gonna have total liabilities the average total liabilities is going to be two thousand and then for firm two we'll say that that's one thousand five hundred now we want to compute the cash debt coverage ratio for these two firms. We take the cash flow from operations, that's going to be our numerator, and now instead of our denominator being average current liabilities as it was with the, ca the current cash debt coverage ratio, now it's average total liabilities. And so we just divide these two numbers, the 2500 divided by 2000 for firm one, is going to give us a cash debt coverage ratio of 1.25. And then for firm two, we divide the 1200 by 1500, and that gives us a cash debt coverage ratio of 0.8. Now, how do we interpret these, these ratios? Well, as with all the liquidity ratios we've looked at in the past, a higher number implies higher liquidity. So firm one being that it has a current, or ca excuse me, a cash debt coverage ratio of 1.25, which is higher than Firm 2's 0.8 cash debt coverage ratio. This implies that when we look at all the firm's obligations, when we look at its total liabilities, and then when we look at the f the amount of cash the firm is generating from its current op or from its operations, Firm 1 is in a better position to satisfy those obligations, both current and long-term, from its cash flows. 